Uh, we need an intro. We got an intro. Yep. Okay. Maybe. Okay. We just did three intros. Monkeys go directly to hell. Welcome to Gorilla Radio Show episode 35. Today we're going to be talking about monkeys and little red fezzes. Yeah, um, it, we're, I'm thinking it's it's going to be a bit of a variety episode, but, you know, for this is this is the main rabbit hole I fell down this week. So... This is this podcast is just the whims of Austin's little brain. It's, it's my whims. Going on it's little my monkey whims. tangents. Hi, I'm Greg. Hi, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Greg. For, for those of you who don't know, I'm here. I'm Greg. Um, yo, what's the little monkey in Aladdin's name? Is Apu? No, it's Abu, right? I thought it was a. Is it Apu or Abu? I Abu. thought it was. What the fuck it's are they a, in that? Apu, Apu is the Simpsons guy, right? Are they supposed to be like in like Pakistan? Uh, no, uh, no, it's, it's not. Fic- it's a fictional country called like some make, yeah, Agraba some make, uh, or something. Agraba, some Agraba. fake Agraba. desert country. Mm. Yeah, we um, made it up. Feels it feels it feels very like Pakistani, North Indian almost. Um, it doesn't feel it's not Iranian enough because they all have Pakistani kind of names, mm-hmm. and they have <laughs> okay. a Raj, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's typical like white Disney, you know, <laughs> condensing and conglomerating <laughs> all of South Asia into one thing and the uh, Southwest Asia into one are thing. We, are we? Are we? Uh backsliding are we went 20 episodes without any any race science. <laughs> and no indian geopolitics we're oh. back baby we're back baby let's go <laughs> but yeah so today uh i figure so the little red hats the little the little red fezzes on these monkeys it's a, mm-hmm. it's a cultural staple by now but like where do they come from and it's interesting mm-hmm. to Turkey, look at the I roots assume. of that <laughs> yeah probably turkey but or I have an even more pertinent thought: the Balkans. The ba- I. <laughs> what you think they just came from there wearing fezes? They had to hide the scars. I'm not the gonna scars. speak on it. Anymore. They hide. They <laughs> You're had not to gonna hide. speak on it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So basically, the the cultural concept of these monkeys wearing little red fezes is usually. They're being depicted in a mischievous manner. With rare exceptions, they're often indulging in human vices, such as smoking and drinking and tomfoolery. Uh huh. Perhaps even a little bit of thievery. Ooh, That's great, a classic. Great human vices. Uh-huh. Yeah. <clears throat> also, well, how did you think we were not going to be talking about political stuff with this one? Of course, yeah. we're going to jump into the geopolitics. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. Oh, yeah, I'm I mean, reading the okay. first paragraph here, and yeah. You know. I am. Listen, you have uh, this research document is great. I have Saeed's Orientalism pulled up right here on the other monitor. I'm ready to start reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I got nothing except the thing between my eyes, my brain, my ears. Thing, be- cut this. <laughs> <laughs> cut this out. Cut this out. Let me try again. I've got nothing except the thing between my ears, all right? I've, you realize I'm Cut cutting this. none of this. <laughs> cutting <laughs> none of this. The whole thing saying it. Thing again. <laughs> so, yeah. So, the the main, like, real-life example of monkeys wearing little red fezzes, and, like, the reason why monkeys started being depicted as wearing little red fezzes is because of street organ grinders which were basically, I guess sort of the origin of this is in many towns in Europe, the barrel street organ was used by a group of musicians as a part of a storytelling street act. And, you know, they had brightly colored posters and sing-along sessions. Uh, But, Mm -hmm. you know, as this was imported to America by the Italians, I guess, um, Hmm. they were notoriously annoying in New York City. Uh, A direct quote here is, In New York City, the massive influx of Italian immigrants led to a situation where, by 1880, nearly one in every 20 Italian men in certain areas were organ grinders. Do Um, you guys know what this means? I have some thoughts. There's a 1 in 20 chance. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that I'm directly descended from an Italian organ grinder. <laughs> you're, you're a descendant of that guy, like, with a little monkey <laughs> on the streets of New York. <laughs> this was, this was, like, your fate was written in the stars. <laughs> Is there, are there still organ grinders up in New York? I hope They're not. They're still doing that shit? I've never seen one. You've been to New York. Yeah, so I've been to New York I, a lot I of times. I think not because they were, like, so horrendous, like, screechingly horrible listen- to listen to. Like, nobody liked them. Everyone hated them. So much so that in New York, where monkeys were commonly used as a part of the act, where either they would be operating the organ grinder while the, you know, Italian guy was just doing whatever, trying to get tips, or they would switch places and the monkey would be going around with its hat and, like, hold the hat out to collect a little, you know, change. Mayor... Fiorello LaGuardia, I, if that's LaGuardia. Like, it's like the LaGuardia. airport. It's named like it's the, the fucking guy, airport. It's the guy How did you fuck that one up? I don't know. You fucking I don't know. Bitch shit. I don't know. Y'all been to LaGuardia, late, LaGuardia lately? It's Ugh, dope as I shit. went in like 2020. I've it was like never been to this airport in my they life. They fixed LaGuardia? Is it less garbage? It's garbage amazing now. That's at least, at least, At least like Terminal A, oh, I think. LaGuardia is supposed to be a shittle. It's supposed to welcome you to New York. It's a, it's a picture of the city. Yeah, I know. I've never been to New York City. Don't care to be there. Ah, uh, fuck you. Says the guy eating his fucking boiled beef sandwiches in fucking frozen wasteland of Chicago. <laughs> anyway, I mean, listen. I, listen. Fiorello, how the fuck you say this? It's Fiorello. You know, this Italian's name. I'm not particularly interested in it. I know why he banned the monkeys. It's not because they were a nuisance. It's because he wanted to destroy anti-Italian stereotypes. And this is what he Well, he let me tell you about anti-Italian stereotypes. Why don't you go ahead and Google him? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! And look at a picture of the guy. I, I, that's the first. I, I make sure to Google him before I make this joke. His, his board name, board name, Fiorello Enrico Laguardia. Oh, yeah. oh shit! He really does just look like the guy on the front of like a fucking pizza. That's not even actually his. Whole he looks like Peter Griffin. That's honestly, not even, that's not even actually his whole name. It's Fiorello Raffaele Enrico Laguardia. Ah, oh, this is fucked up. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> oh my god. He was 5'2! Of course he was! <laughs> He's hitting shit. all the fucking stereotypes here. Oh my god. Bro was small. <laughs> hey, at least at least he was a Republican. They don't make guys what? these tiny anymore. Well back then being a Republican was good. Well yeah, yeah, yeah. He was part of the machine. He was literally uh, part of the political machine of New York. That's yeah. true. Oh, he was a mayor. So anyways, <laughs> uh, back to before we got off topic, Fiorello LaGuardia banned the instruments from the streets in 1935. Uh, they didn't necessarily ban the monkeys, just the instruments, so they didn't really have like a bit to do with the monkeys anymore, because <laughs> uh, I-, I guess like just cranking the little street organ was the most complicated task they could teach most of these monkeys. But yeah, anyways, the organ grinder's monkey emerged in the early 1900s and just it just entered the public imagination as if you're going to see a monkey this is probably where you're going to see a monkey because zoos weren't like as commonplace as we think of them now if you're going to see a monkey in person it's probably going to be on the street or at the circus performing something like that but yeah essentially the organ grinders were very annoying they got banned but the cultural impact stuck essentially red fezes uh, on the monkeys on. hold on i'm so sorry i got really lost here in reading about laguardia and i okay. need to, i need to just i need to just i need to just get this out <laughs> okay so his entire political career he was essentially bernie sanders right except for one thing uh-huh. one thing this guinea guinea fuck okay oh my god he, okay this italian motherfucker okay He's anti anti Hitler. He's anti all this shit because he's in office in like the thirties and forties. Except when Mussolini's fascist Italy oh, invaded no. Ethiopia. Oh no! Laguardia presented a one hundred thousand dollar check to the Italian Consul General <laughs> as part of seven hundred thousand dollars raised by New York by New York based Italian Americans to oh, fund the fuck. invasion. Oh no! He did no! Everything no! Else cool. Everything else he did, he was literally, he was literally well. A he did. He did also. He this did one thing. He did also bury uh, a report about the Harlem riots and about he the injustices of discrimination and employment. 
He did do that. Um, he did so, do that. Yeah, he did do that as well. Um, supported the Russian Revolution. Yeah. You think this is the? Do you <laughs> think this is the moment that Italians became white in America? Yeah, for <laughs> like... sure. Uh, listen, this is straight from the Wikipedia page. LaGuardia was the city's first Italian American mayor, but was not a typical Italian New Yorker. Uh oh, <laughs> everybody. He was a fucking Freemason. Freemason. Oh, um, God. Damn, this is actually. The Fezzes. Nice. That explains the Fezzes, right? Maybe. Opposed they, prohibition yeah, no, no, no. and then put his own beer. Hell yeah. Um, because he was immune from prosecution because he was a member of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. Good for him. But yeah, so let me let me restart. These monkeys often went in the crowds with a little tin cup and would essentially beg for change from passerby. They didn't beg for change with their little red hats? What's well, the, the other, fucking point? Well, the other Italian guy who was cranking the thing was going, Please, I help you feed my family! <laughs> <laughs> See, I could have I sworn they used the hats too, but maybe that's just like in cartoons. I think that might just be in Aladdin. I've never seen this in person. You'll have to forgive me. <laughs> um, but... Austin's never seen an Italian man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah basically uh this paragraph goes on to say the organ grinders were almost universally regarded as uh as a nuisance because of the horrible atonal noise they generated mm -hmm. and people often regarded their work as a thinly veiled pretext for extorting money from passerbys uh this ties in with the monkeys because the monkeys often uh they were a seen as an extension of their quote unquote shadiness and cunning. And because they were wearing a colored vest and a small hat resembling a fez, the monkey therefore started to draw in the American public imagination, a connection between, you know, Oriental fears that the Americans had at the time. People started to associate the monkeys with like the average, like Turkish man, I guess, if that makes sense. He said, not me. <laughs> No, 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 I, 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 I didn't say Turkish men were monkeys. You did. I didn't either. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. as a, so basically, like, hey Austin, he do you want to do this racist joke you wrote into the script next? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 I did no such thing. <laughs> but es essentially, these monkeys were like a stand-in for actual turkish people and if people thought of a turkish person they'd think oh I like those little monkeys wearing the turkish clothes and you know i, I guess that's in a way how it prejudice is formed via italians as they all are you know <laughs> go ahead say something racist <laughs> but yeah how, so how close are you gonna get <laughs> essentially uh, this this next article I wanted to read because it's a little the one the one in the notes that you say read in a racist French accent. No, only only the parts that are <laughs> only the parts that are in French. You have to do like in a like stupid like French guy accent. Um. So yeah, I found this blog post from something called Rowley's Whiskey Forge. It was written in 2011, and you might be wondering why we're reading this. It's simply because I love like anecdotal shit like this from. You know the early internet. It's it's a, it's a lot of fun to read. So I'll read the first paragraph, and Greg, uh, I don't know how we'll work this out, but we'll make it so that you can read the French parts and just do your best French guy impression. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this article says, "I am sad to say, fascinated with fez monkeys. Have been for decades. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen them: chimps, spider monkeys, organ grinding monkeys." Monkeys dressed in human clothing are just behaving as humans do, but always with a red fez on their little heads. They've been used as pencil tops, calling card holders, wind-up toys, wall sconces, and other countless decorative arts. I've found old French porcelain statuettes of simian gentlemen in the finest 18th century garb aping humanity. When the fez in particular came into play, I haven't been able to tell. My gut tells me that for the answer to that, we should look to French-occupied North Africa, Tunisia, Morocco, or Algeria, but I don't yet have the resources to track down the earliest examples. The article continues. I do, however, collect images of these red-hatted monkeys behaving badly when I travel. About ten years ago, I wandered into a postcard shop in Paris. Cartophilia was jammed, floor to ceiling, with boxes of old postcards, they were organized by themes familiar to those who prowl such shops, hotels, railroads, clowns, butchers, etc. When I entered, the owner was engaged in low conversation with another old man. I smiled, 
bonjour. He looked me over and turned back to his conversation with the polite but dismissive bonjour, monsieur. Ooh. I had been weighed and measured and apparently did not meet standards. The two continued to talk, paying no further attention. A younger woman in the shop glanced up and smiled at me, then went back to her box of old cards. My French is self-taught and far from perfect. But I hauled it into you. All righty, folks. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read every bit of this. All right, everybody. So bear with me. I'll let you know when it's a different person talking. Uh huh. Excuse moi, monsieur. No, this is the lady. This is the woman talking. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that was a woman. That's your normal French woman. He looked up. <laughs> no, no. Oui? That's that's the writer of the article talking. Yeah. Whatever. Je suis le recherche de une carte postale. And then, and then, here we go, in subtext, he thrust out his chin, gave his shoulders a shrug, and indicated the hundreds of boxes around him like I was an idiot for not seeing them myself. Oui? Je suis le recherche de une carte postale, I continued, avec une image de signes, les signes, he exclaimed, Mo parentheses, monkeys? Whoever heard of such a thing? We, oui, I plowed on. We, oui, mais, mais les singes avec des chapeaux rouges. <laughs> Monkeys with red hats. He looked at me, a face filled with incredulity. An imbecile stood before him. Impossible <laughs> to conceive that such a thing did or could ever exist. No. He turned back <laughs> to his conversation. At that point, the pretty young woman cleared her throat. In lightly accented English, she asked, are you looking for <laughs> for monkeys wearing fezes? <laughs> I admitted that I was. She turned to the old man. Papa, un chapeau Tunisian. Ah, his face lit up like fireworks. Un chapeau Tunisian? Monkey with a red hat that he'd never heard of. A conceptual impossibility. But a monkey with a Tunisian hat? Well, that's a different story entirely. One was located within two minutes. I bought my postcard with its bad, booze-drinking monkeys and learned that when I return to France on the trail of these fez monkeys so popular with the tiki crowd, I shall hunt for les signes avec des chapeaux tunisiens. But I'm sure something else will be wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. That was incredible. I was enjoyed that, good? that. I think I might have actually done the pronunciation right. Yeah, I'm probably. I don't know. <laughs> the French really do just talk so fucking terribly. Oh my god, my windows yeah. are open. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I was on the fucking you. ground floor. <laughs> Everyone outside heard you doing that bit. <laughs> I, hope, I hope like a French guy passed by and it's just like, oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you gotta get like a baguette thrown through your window. Mm -hmm. I also, so I'm looking closely at this little um, postcard, which we should probably put in the show notes. Um, this, at least probably this whole article. So you can yeah, yeah, check. Because this, this, the... this website seems pretty interesting. I do like these old blogs. But yeah. this, this, this fucking, these monkeys are wearing like these really, really stupid, cheap, like fezzes that obviously are made of paper. And like have like, <laughs> like gold, like ribbon, like tinsel or whatever like threading it together you're getting mad at the traditional turkish headwear right now <laughs> i'm getting no, mad it at this seems cheap, like a cheap imitation of it it's a cheap imitation also what does chessy bone mean uh, chessy bone that's uh, good probably it is good. i think it means it is good mm, <laughs> it is good you know yeah these guys are enjoying it these are also these are also chips by the way yeah not monkeys so yeah, yeah they're not all so good uh, I, I guess it's like a. I'm wondering if it's, a it's like a worldwide phenomenon of just refusing to distinguish between monkeys and apes. Yeah, or this is I, it's just like a you uniquely. Know, like, you know, I this is just going to be the thing that we're dealing with the end forever while we do this podcast. Um, because yeah. they're all fucking monkeys, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> they're all primates, but you know, I I've said many times that I don't care. It's just you know. Mm. And also, are you going to ask the French to try and differentiate between shit? <laughs> so, I, I'll, I'll admit, I don't really know. Greg, you definitely know more about, like, the North, the French occupation of North Africa. I do, than I know a lot about <laughs> Yeah. Tell so, me. like, what's the connection between, like, him immediately recognizing Fez's as Tunisian and, like... Oh, yeah, let me, let me just tell you what that is. Um, yeah. 
normal French racism. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I guess if you really wanted to go, this is the connection. Um, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. Well, not really Morocco, but Tunisia and Tunisia and Algeria were just kind of satellite states of the Ottoman Empire for a thousand years almost. Okay. So like Turk. Turkishization, whatever you want to fucking call it, or Ottomanization, like occurred in North Africa. So a lot of people in North Africa kind of took on Ottoman, I guess, cosmopolitan culture in North African mm-hmm. cities. So like the Fez was like a common, was and might still be a common hat, like in Anatolia. And so that just kind of transferred to North Africa and also from the out right colonization by the Ottoman Turks of North Africa became a thing that was associated with them. Um, and then the French, because they're racist, um, categorize people just kind of by what they look like. So, yeah. So basically if they, if they wear the silly red hat, then they'd like to drink booze and be bad. Is no, which is the interesting part. Cause those people don't drink. Really? Then they're, they're Muslim. It's they don't interesting drink. that all the monkeys are like depicted drinking alcohol. Then no, they don't drink. They're Muslim. I, I think I don't know. Yeah, most Muslim people don't drink at all. Yeah. It. I wonder how that like how did that like connection build then that like the Italians. Monkeys... Oh, maybe. Well, maybe I don't Italians know. Sicilians who are essentially the North Africans of <laughs> Southern Europe. <laughs> it's Italians like, going you, back you, in you, time to invent racism <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> it's like. Like if you like the a French guy on one room and an Italian guy on the other room, they say something racist and it bounces back more racist and just keeps bouncing back like like a the fucking like uh, hyperbolic time chamber. Yeah, and it Ball. did that enough times that it like spawned off Spain and Portugal. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I will say in the comments, the the owner of this blog, Matthew Rowley, uh, is responding to a comment that doesn't exist. Oh, no, it actually does exist. Uh, someone named Mike says, Tunisian monkeys behaving badly. Racism made adorable. Interesting. And then the author of the post said, racist francophones? I've never heard of such a thing. That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> a conceptual so this guy, this, impossibility. This guy this, loves that phrase. Yeah. This guy's this guy's kind of funny. We should get him on the show. <laughs> he's, he's, I already went to his main page. He stopped posting on the blog in 2014, but his Twitter is still active. Oh. Really? Is he? Is he yeah, like? Well, the last time he tweeted was in November of 2022. Oh, uh, he's know. dead. Maybe, maybe he's, he's a- got a whole other website. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, he's a Philly museum curator. Oh, he's got a whole other website now that he's oh. just, he just posts here. Oh, it, why do we? Cool we do this guy? every single time. We do this every <laughs> is this time. A cool guy? We we do some little bit of research for a show, and we just talk about some random dude for like forty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just the find the guy to hyperfixate on of Philadelphia. Oh, Listen. his. Boo, lives in SoCal. (laughs) So, yeah. Oh, he wrote a book about bootleggers. Yeah, Lost lost Recipes of Prohibition. It's a cookbook. So he's an author. Get this guy on the fucking show. Yeah, let's invite him. (laughs) So, yeah. um, Basically, this is a... At least the postcard, you know, sort of branching off of this phenomenon, is definitely born of the longstanding European art motif of... The Sinjare, or if that's how you, I don't know how to say it. Do you have any better ideas on how to pronounce that? Sanjare. Is it Sanjare? Where? Probably. Where? I highlighted it's it. It's highlighted right there. Highlighted? Oh, it's highlighted on the thing. Yeah. Oh my uh, <laughs> Sinjare. It's Sinjare. Sinjare. Well, I don't know. It's one of those three pronunciations is, r- pronunciations is right. Um, anyways, this emerged as a genre of satirical painting in which monkeys were depicted aping human behavior. Uh, very funny. You really like uh, that one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually had on our Gorilla Radio Show Twitter account, Gorilla underscore, underscore radio, uh, yeah. we had for a while, I was running an art thread where every day I would post a new singerie, singerie, whatever. Um, singerie. <laughs> the French word for... This is a... this is The translation of this it's a French word, and it means monkey trick. Uh, so it's it's like a little, I don't know, like maybe it was like a meme for them, I guess. <laughs> it, this was like the 16th century French Wojak, if that, <laughs> <laughs> for all of our Zoomers in the audience. <laughs> all of you terminally online people who can't figure it out for yourself. Um, this, yeah. this is a cool little fact that you put in this document here. I'll, I'll yeah. read this one real quick. 
Yeah, you can So the popularity of monkeys in the 18th century also resulted in Sangeré rooms. This was the case with the Chateau de Chantilly in Chantilly, France, about 30 miles from Paris. The chateau was owned by the Bourbon Condé family, and during the Rococo period, Christophe Huet painted two rooms, Le Grand Sangeré and Le Petit Sangeré. Between garlands and sprays of flowers, monkeys covered nearly every surface in a palette that was often pastel or light. Huet depicted monkeys in vignettes performing all sorts of human activities, such as bathing, riding, dressing, playing, and hunting. Um, Marie Antoinette and Princess de Lamballe, who I've never heard of once in my entire life, yeah. <laughs> uh, would have enjoyed them when they visited. Uh, would have, so probably didn't actually ever enjoy them. <laughs> yeah. Just speculation. <laughs> they, uh, yeah. You know when Marie Antoinette and this chick, Princess de Lamballe, was okay, around? Okay, so this description was taken from a... Uh, in. It was a museum's description of one of the Sangeré paintings that I posted mm -hmm. in that Twitter thread. So, mm -hmm. the, yeah, just take it what, for what you will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I assume a museum of has... French, of the French going too far. Yeah, actually, no, I can't assume a museum this has good curation because it's a museum. Because we live in a terrible world where nothing is good. Um, and everything's so, yeah. bad, actually. And the French <laughs> exist. See, if the French didn't exist in this world, I would have faith in museum curators. These don't even look uh, like monkeys. This guy's dog shit at this. <laughs> <laughs> you, so, yeah. I'm looking at pictures. They just None of them look like monkeys. It's like, come on, man. Europeans you clearly had a reference. didn't always have a great idea of what monkeys look like. Motherfucker, he clearly did. That's, because this would have, that's what inspired it. Yeah, but like... Uh, you never look at one? There weren't... Hold on. I mean, that's the thing. Squirrels. I mean, yeah, the thing is, painters back in this time didn't get to look at the damn things. They, like, people who see, saw monkeys, went out, saw monkeys, and told people what they looked like. So, yeah, let me, let me, back in the days of painting, you couldn't just, like, get a monkey to pose for a painting, even if, like, you uh -huh. somehow <laughs> had a captive, like, trained monkey in France in the 16th century, for some reason. For some reason. Um, I'm sure they did. But there was this one <laughs> yeah, artist. Yeah, true, honestly, yeah. Imperi <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't the Imperials have that? Late, yeah, late, uh, not even Imperial, that's not even really Imperial. Late, like, Colonial. monarchy of France? You think they didn't have a little, like, a little, a little <laughs> disgusting little creature of a man who had, like, six <laughs> for some reason? So, the mo one of the most famous, or I guess at least the most, like, competent of these Sangeré artists was Gabriel von Max. And mm -hmm. he had a lot of, uh, Actually, pretty good uh, paintings of monkeys, but the reason why they look so good is because he would. This was uh, close enough to the time period where science was done by shooting monkeys and then taxiderming <laughs> them and studying the taxidermies. Um, As they so should be. <laughs> essentially, he got a bunch of dead monkeys and taxidermied them. And he into... still did a dog shit job of painting them? No, they no, were no. right there. The first. I think these look good. Like the first one in our Twitter thread. Have you seen it? Uh, did you see the tweet I just made? Um, oh no. You made a tweet? Oh I god. Did. I made a tweet. Okay, well, this is live reaction. <laughs> Let's see. Live reaction to fucking Greg tweet. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's no, that's not Gabriel von Max. I don't know um, who the fuck that is. Look, Were I'll you just talking about him? Yeah. yeah are you I was listening? so you absorbed are, you are with making listening. my little monkey tweet. <laughs> His I'm ass so is so not sorry. listening. <laughs> Anyways, this is an example of something that Gabriel Von Oh, Max that's made. really good. Yeah, it's really good, but the reason why they were so good is because he would taxidermy these monkeys into poses and then paint them as if it was a still life. That's incredi incredibly based in monkey pilled. I love it. <laughs> I, it's a little fucked up, but like, I, I, it makes for some cool art. Like, I won't lie. I'm already enjoying. dead. I mean, I guess. Um, there's also a lot of paintings that are sort of meta of monkeys painting humans. Uh, <laughs> and it's sort of like a little, like, uh, self-aggrandizing, like, little, like, I still can't get self deprecating, over, I guess. I can't get over Hewitt's humor. entire chateau that is just like essentially a Wojak museum for the 17th <laughs> century. Just like. I know, it's a <laughs> just fucking like you walk into like a big like fucking european palace and there's just like a bunch of different soy jacks on the wall <laughs> <laughs> like engraved in gold but yeah so the rococo era of french architecture or whatever the really like silly like physical interior decoration stuff produced a lot of like monkey memorabilia i guess you could say and 
this combined with the red fez monkey cultural conception and it just became that there's just like so much like you know old little artifacts and postcards and drawings of these monkeys wearing red fezes like uh it's sort of like the it's an intersection of two like long-standing probably at least a little bit racist in both ca- one case definitely racist the other case maybe a little racist um it's just an intersection of these two things and it's i don't know it's interesting to be able to track that through history i think you know what i mean <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh yeah, and uh, on, last thing on Sanjure's, uh Theodore Child in his book Art and Criticism, page 288 uh, from 1892, says, The great and little Sanjure's are two rooms decorated with grotesque panels in which monkeys are represented in all the circumstance of French elegant life in the 18th century, playing at pastoral life like Madame de Pompadour, playing court to fair coquettes, and exhibiting all the foibles of frivolous humanity. Which is just, I don't, it's, it's more fun to say that out loud than anything. <laughs> I, I agree with the grotesque panels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah you know, elegant French life? Yeah. Uh, no, not really. So... What elegance do these people have? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and that's, I guess, the idea behind these paintings was that French people were at least a little bit, like, self-aware of it. And they were very, like... They were mocking themselves with these. Nothing will absolve the French of their sins. (laughs) This, of course, uh, uh, evidently turned into mocking other cultures, but for a time it was like funny and harmless, maybe. At least from what I can find. I am looking around at all these little monkeys in La Grande Sangre, and some of these guys are pretty cool and cute. Some of them fucking suck. Some of these guys rule. Is it still like like, open to this day, or did they like demolish that shit? No, no, no. It's still open to this day. There's this one article I found, Magnificent Photos of Chateau de Chantilly, Chantilly and His Highness the A.G.A. Khan's Visit to the Jewel of French Chandra, Culture. you're going to really? Europe soon, right? That was you wanna... 2012. Yeah, I'll go to the Chantilly for the yeah, same Yeah, get, get, get a picture on the grotesque monkey wall. I'm going to bomb it. Wall. I'm going to oh bomb God, Chateau oh de Chantilly. <laughs> Watch the fuck out, Parisians, all right? You need to stop making it's like, bomb threats on this podcast. <laughs> Listen, you see my power in America. I own these railways. What do you think is going to happen when I get my hands on your infrastructure, Europe? What chance do you think you You're have get, like, against me? A visa. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this uh, all of this led me to my next question of where the fuck were people getting these monkeys in New York? Mm. I, I've sort of put a on little boat, note in there probably. asking you guys to like research it, but oh, I don't think we you did. did. Yeah, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh, well, that's not even what this says. It just your just says research. Where were people getting these monkeys in New York? I thought that was a question you were asking fucking rhetorically, not like Greg. You Google this. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. I don't know. Also, I didn't they were just coming on steamships. Haven't you seen fucking Tarzan? I mean, yeah, but like, I get, but like, was the demand really that high? I mean. In our last Patreon episode we did about Joe Martin the Orangutan, we talked briefly about the Robison of San Francisco Company, who was basically, like, the huge, like, West Coast exotic animal importer, and he would just bring any fucking, like, exotic animal into America and sell them to, like, circuses and exhibitions and pretty much anyone who wanted them. Well, you're acting like they're, like, of course the demand was high. This is, like, the peak of the Gilded Age. Like, yeah. This is when the rich just had money to throw at everything before they realized that they can squirrel it away and then call it trickle-down economics. <laughs> yeah, and I'm wondering if maybe this Robison of San Francisco Company was sort of like the original sin in a way, like the original importer and just a lot of other ones were just basically being captively bred Probably. for the next like century. I actually looked into... We talked about, I think it was episode six, the Christmas, the first ever Christmas episode. Uh, We talked about how you used to be able in like, I think it was like the 60s and 70s to just buy a monkey via like a newspaper ad. Like they'd be like, mail in this postcard with 20 bucks and we'll send you a squirrel monkey. The company that was uh, doing those deals was something called the Animal Farm Company of Miami Beach, Florida, and I cannot find any record of this company's existence on Google. I'm assuming they were not long for this earth, 
<laughs> but I'm also wondering if maybe it wasn't like an official company. If maybe just somewhere in the cursed, like depraved land of Miami, Florida, there was just like a literal f- animal farm <laughs> where they were just like basically breeding monkeys and just shipping them off every couple of weeks. That That's my best guess, at least. Hi, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far, but it's time for us to make some money off you people. So go ahead and check out our awesome sponsor, Monkey Cool Coffee, um, for maybe you get some, maybe you get yourself some new coffee. You know, it's good. It's bourbon chocolate chip. It's all natural. I used to have the damn – I had a website that told me all of the stuff about this, but use – Code Travis at checkout for 10% off your order, okay? It's really good coffee. I have some – I keep going through it like incredibly quickly because I'm a coffee whore and so is Jaden. You don't know who Jaden is. You don't need to know. Um, It's it's good. You should you should get – go monkeycultcoffee.com, promo code Travis, okay? Like the monkey that ate that lady's face, Travis, all right? Check it out. I think, I think you'll like it. Okay. There's Nat Reed. Good job. Yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. All right. Um, so um, when... I, I'm not sure uh, what y'all's conversation was regarding wrapping up our conversation about monkeys. It was me though. trying to record the ad seven times. <laughs> no, I got that part. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so um, I took the liberty to do a little bit of research to see what I could find. I couldn't find too much, but I did find some funny stuff that's not totally related. So I wasn't able to find anything about um, monkey smuggling in the 30s and 40s. Um, mm-hmm. But I was able to find out about the 1907 fashion trend in New York where very bougie, rich women would dress up in all their silks and furs and they would have a little pet monkey going along with them. Um, this trend is replaced pretty sh- shortly after by the small dog fashion trend really pomeranians and stuff right i can imagine why (laughs) you can imagine why monkeys are really unruly and terrible to keep gross but um be like ripping the jewelry out of those ladies heads i guarantee it uh 1907 can you hear my cat meowing in the background yeah (laughs) can you hear corn dog he wants in so bad he wants to be in let him in yeah i should he's just gonna meow right in the microphone that's fine corn dog It's not time to eat yet. You still have like an hour and a half for dinner. Okay. So, um, in 1907, in the early early 1900s, early 20th century, in New York, it was really popular to walk around with little uh, little monkeys. Um, And these are like like little capuchins. (laughs) (laughs) These are like little capuchins, like real tall, small guys, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm guessing most of them came from Latin America. Because they did. They came from South we America. D- because of what yes. we were doing to Latin America at the um, time. So I will say... Well, we continue to do them you, now. Yeah. The So uh, the so this uh, Bowery, Bowery Boys history? What? I guess Bowery Boys history, whatever. Wait, I know who the Bowery Boys are. Who are the Bowery Boys? I, I feel like I know that name. Maybe okay. from the movie Gangs of New York. but uh, Okay, so Bowery Boys History has this little write-up about this and who I'm going to be sourcing a lot for this. Um, the animals were brought over on trading ships, a basket full scooped up off the coasts of South America or even as far away as South Africa. A boatload of 1,000 monkeys arrived in New York in 1909, a cargo oh which God. also included hundreds of exotic birds and a couple dozen pythons. If they survived, they were given to importers throughout the cities or sometimes sold right on the dock. Um, and this leads into a very interesting... I will murder you. He's eating my headphone cord. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is, this got me to a really interesting book called um, Firefighters and Their Pets. Um, also, This was also written in 1907. Um, huh. New York firefighters had pet monkeys or pet apes. They actually had chimps. What? No fucking way. Yeah, one of this chimp's names was uh, Jocko, I believe. Uh, so, and this this here is a page out of this book, uh, "Firefighters and Their Pets" by Alfred Michael Downs. Another weakness that firemen endeavored to correct in Jocko was his constant effort to clean out all the peanut stands in the neighborhood. The monkey would first make friends with the proprietor of the stand, and then after having secured his full confidence, he would proceed in a leisurely way to rob the stand. Naturally, the firemen did not wish to see the peanut seller lose his stock in trade, and they decided upon a measure to make Jocko reform. 
They suggested that some fresh roasted peanuts, as hot as possible, should be put in Jocko's way. The peanut man followed the advice so thoroughly that Jocko never again attempted to secure goods under false pretenses. Um, but <laughs> Jocko just, like, did not. This monkey with peanuts. They scorched this monkey with peanuts. That's not it. Jocko did not give up his bad habit without a struggle. When he felt the newly roasted and burning hot peanuts, he looked at the man with an injured expression and promptly hurled the nuts back into his face. Then he oh fell God. upon him, striking and scratching him with his paws. Oh my God. The only thing that saved that poor Italian from being <laughs> so marked up that none of his friends would know him was the prompt <laughs> action of an alert fireman who, seeing the danger, promptly pulled Jocko away and sent him to the engine house. Hayloft sent him to the engine house hayloft to, med to meditate upon his sins in solitary confinement. So listen. We tried they were really just hard. Letting chimps maul people. <laughs> they were like, having a great time. Listen, they—they they were all having a good one. They were all high on fucking opium and the cocaine, Coca Cola. So yeah, they were having a great time. Balling. I would love to be a fireman in 1907 New York. I, God, I really wish work. I could get the cocaine, Coca Cola. <laughs> Me too. That'd be yeah, a really great is, way to consume cocaine. It's I think. Like it every be. episode, we just find something new and insane about American history. Like. It's like we're not a this good is, country. <laughs> this is like not a normal country. Like, what? What is wrong with us? Like, what? they just the fire. The New York firefighters just had a pet chimp that they just let roam the city, just just freely. Yeah, I'm, they I'm just saying like the little punctuation between everything we say with this. Meow. Yeah, <laughs> I told you I should let him in. He's worse. He just meows all the time. <laughs> oh my god! Hey, oh, he's yeah. on the desk now. He's I heard like, him yeah, meow. so. The company that imported all these chimps and primates, what what was the purpose? Did it say? Uh, it doesn't say. That was that was the one reason I didn't have. I don't have much because the article just kind of casually, offhandedly, offhandedly mentioned where these monkeys are coming from. There is a source they cite, but the page is unavailable. The New York Times doesn't have the article anymore. We will have to go down this rabbit hole. I think this is a rabbit so hole. We should go down. This is fun. This is a rabbit hole. Um, I like. I'm gonna try and get my hands on this book, Firefighters and Their Pets, because there's a lot of stuff about monkeys in there. There's multiple pet monkeys. Um, okay. So yeah, this is, this is a great yeah, avenue let's, to explore. I don't know if this is bonus episode territory or public episode territory. We'll but, find out later. But we're gonna look into it. We're going yeah. from rabbit hole to rabbit hole. It's <laughs> a fucking like rabbit cave system at this point. People thought we would run out of things to talk about, but monkeys. They're everywhere, baby. It's never fucking ending, folks. We it's fucking never love. ending. Just ever like, it, it's like every day in 20th century America, there's just a new monkey just killing someone in broad yeah. daylight. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta ask my mom to f tell me about the just so I can get the date range. There was a time when a bunch of spider monkeys escaped onto Long Island in like the 80s, and then they did not catch them all. Like some were just out there for a real long time. We gotta figure out when that happened because that's also something we should talk about. Yeah, oh. it reminds me a bit of what Mamadou brought up and something that I offhandedly mentioned really, really early in the pod, I think, of those monkeys who were on an island as a tourist attraction, but then just simply swam to shore and could never be tracked down again. <laughs> this brings me to my last little note that I wrote for myself here. In the show, the HBO Max original, The Last of Us, you know, everyone's been watching yes, that lately. Yes, I have been watching as well. I only got three episodes in, um, but... I'm, 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 only, I'm on the third one! What's up with everyone only being, like, a few episodes in? It's the coming first out. one is so fucking long! It's only an hour long, isn't it? How long is the first one? I don't know, I don't know the time for it, like an but... hour and a half, almost two hours. That's, fun. That's how long a movie is. They come out every week, once a week. It's not that hard. Look, I already played the game. I already know how it fucking ends. It's not That's your own problem. I mean, I know it's not interesting. It's not a very interesting I show. Don't, I don't want to fuck Pedro Pascal, so there's no fucking point in me. Well, I'm Pedro sorry you're fucking... fucked up like that. I'm sorry your brain just doesn't work. <laughs> I think it's, it's like the only good, one of the only good video game adaptations, like in cinema slash tv show form but i'm philosophically not, opposed to it that's not saying much but what i will say is there is allegedly a scene i there remember is. the giraffe i scene have seen in, the scene that's in salt lake city that's in salt lake city it is the university of salt that's lake when we get, that's when we get to salt lake city in the game and then yeah and i can't i want it to be in the show that's like half the reason i'm only watching so we get to hear yeah, yeah. so um i mean i'll, I'll you know <laughs> you if you've played the game you i think you might know the context 
But um, I haven't played the game, so I just know what the show told me. But Joel and Ellie, I think, are... Uh, they go to the first Firefly camp, and it's no- nothing good there. I think it's like Detroit or whatever, and they get killed, basically. They're getting killed. Um, so they go take a horse, I think, down to University of Salt Lake to where all the Firefly things are converging. and uh, Or something like that. And there is a uh, just... University of Salt Lake City is totally d- empty, totally abandoned, and there are a bunch of baboons running around. And I know exactly what I know what our notes say here. And I will mm-hmm. say, the second I saw this, I was like, "Why aren't the monkeys?" Well, I, no, the second I thought, saw this, I'm like, "Oh my god, are we gonna get zombie monkeys? Are we gonna get the infected Definitely monkeys?" Not. And no, I I was so ready for infected monkeys. They are there would be a great video game enemy. <laughs> right? It would be, yeah. yeah so I, I but... thought immediately when I saw the monkeys. Infected yeah, monkeys. The, I mean, the video game does this a lot, a lot where there's like a lot, you have to, there's a lot of suspension of disbelief in the video game because it's a video game. And then that those things don't work. They don't work on the TV show. It doesn't make sense on the TV show. Like The, monkeys the TV show sick. is so miserable, man. Because <laughs> the TV show is such a, it's just a, a fucking it's video a game. It's fucking slog. It's like, because even like when we sat down and watched the first episode, Jaden was just like, this looks like a cinema, this is like cutscenes. It, it's it, just it is, it is cutscene. Cut scene. Like, it is just every cutscene in the game spliced together mm-hmm. with, like, little yeah. moments where it would be the player doing actions. But most of it is just the cutscenes. Like, especially at the first episode when they're driving through the town, like, that's the cutscene. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's how the game I've opens. seen that cutscene, yeah. Like, the first I... episode is, like, the first 15 minutes of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stretch hours, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, okay, well, you know what? Let's just become last of a spoiler podcast right now because I I'm gonna... uh, hate everyone. All right, not, can we get back on top? Okay, so. Meow. <laughs> He's so I was, loud. So anyways, this brings me to my point about uh, the baboons in The Last of Us. In the show, there's a bunch of monkeys running around, baboons. And it's very, I don't, you know, you guys talked about spoilers for so long that I don't even <laughs> remember what the fuck my point was, but it's very interesting that in a zombie apocalypse scenario, there's baboons that aren't infected by the zombie disease because yeah, are baboons real- the same body temperature as us? I mean, here's the thing: there's like so much disease transfer between human primates and non-human primates that yeah, I don't believe for a second that there wouldn't be chimp-infected zombies running around. <laughs> now, granted, chimp clicker. <laughs> that would be dope. That would be a great. That would be fucking kick ass. But I don't know why. That would be a great it. fight in the game. Not enough money in the animation budget, folks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe the idea was they want to show like, oh, nature's healing, but it's like <sighs> in a post-apocalyptic world, what there is a good chance that like captive zoo animals could just like run amok and be free, but. I think we've talked about this before. I think in most of these scenarios, the zoos would just execute all the monkeys, like yeah. mercy kill them. Also, this is a this is a, a research lab, which means there's a lot less monkeys, a lot less animals, and much much tighter regulation on them. Um, those all those baboons would have been killed yeah, the second spe- outbreak started. Speaking yeah. speaking of as someone who works in a research lab, the second there was a global like zombie pandemic, they would be like putting those monkeys on a fucking firing wall. <laughs> like, they, yeah. they'd be lining them up in just machine guns. So, uh, because it, they monkeys would jet, like, there's a reason why almost every pandemic movie starts with, like, a monkey giving a disease to a guy. Because there's such, yeah. like, excellent disease vectors. They're basically, like, humans, but they're, like, small and will run at you and, like, sneeze in your and mouth. wash and their hands. Yeah, and they've never washed their hands in their lives. <laughs> and all yeah. they do is pick their ass. Could and you imagine? Throw their balls. Could you imagine never having washed your hands? I would kill myself about it. Yeah, how did like that? That does that does make me like? I wonder sometimes, like, what was it like to be like an early human, just Gross. never really taking no. a real shower, like with soap? They stink to high heaven. The really? Aztecs was it? The Aztecs who had. They had, they had pretty cool bathing stuff going on. Yeah, but like By the before time we civilization, got to building pyramids, people were taking a bath. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe people have always been like that. But maybe people have always been clean as an evolutionary thing 
to but because we lost like you our would hair. you would think it's like like it would be evolutionary that we try to yeah. clean ourselves off. Um, I I uh, read I was reading about the the Spanish Inquisition or uh, the Spanish colonization of uh, Mesoamerica of South America mm -hmm. uh, you know, South America everything, uh, and I read this one uh, anecdotal thing, or I, I don't know like I guess this one captain's log or whatever, and then uh, an actual like you know researcher analyzing it, uh, and so when the Spanish uh, uh, you know soldiers came in to uh, the What's the what's the what's that big Aztec city called? So the, yeah, I think so. Um, which, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Which either one of those. Um, those sound right. They have like they had aqueducts and running water and all that stuff, right? They were bringing in fresh water, bringing out wastewater and stuff. And in order to get rid of the smell, the stench of the 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 Spanish sailors, they would walk around with incense and flowers, and just you know blow it around them and like throw the flowers on them. And they thought they were being welcomed, but they just in reality they were just like trying shit. to cover up the scent because they were ruining the vibe of the city. <laughs> um, yeah, which I think is very funny. Yeah, just just the stinkiest white guys imaginable. Europeans just in like the early Renaissance were filthy. Like, yeah, uh huh. They were probably among the filthiest people on the planet. Like this is a, this was a group of people who have just recently rediscovered how to fuck enough to make your cities grow again. Yeah. And they had not had running water in their cities since, like, Rome fell. The Black so, Death was not divine punishment. God doesn't care about Europeans enough. No, that was no. called they fucking just, around and finding out. That's what that was. They were incredibly fucking filthy, and it's also part of why, like, the Black Death, everybody was like, oh, it's the Jews' fault. It's just because Jewish people bathe more regularly as a cultural thing in the Middle Ages than filthy-ass Catholics in a dirt farm in Poland were bathing. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think an interesting thought experiment. Did monkeys contract the Black Plague and like spread it around? Or I'm was... just gonna Google that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Go yeah. ahead and Google it. Can um, monkeys catch bubonic this is this is a good episode where we just kind of go off on a bunch of different tangents. Huh? An eight year old, an eight year old it. female hooded capuchin monkey named Spanky was the first zoo animal to be infected with the plague that we know of. That's a lot of information for a monkey that died in the thirteen hundreds. No, 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 no. This no, is no, at the Denver like Zoo. <laughs> well, oh, COVID, the plague. No, plague, plague, plague is like a big problem actually out west. It's like where I live, like. There's parts of the year, like, there'll be a plague outbreak, and you're not allowed to, like, eat the eat game that you kill, like, because they have the plague. The plague? What's the plague? The bubonic fucking plague, dude. The Black Death. Why do yeah. they have that? Why is that <laughs> over there? What the fuck is wrong it's with y'all? It's, like, endemic. It's It exists all around the world. Like, if you catch the plague now, it's fine. They'll just give you amoxicillin. But, um... I can't have amoxicillin. I'll kill Well, me. you're fucked. But, um, <laughs> they give well, you like an eat, antibiotic. Game yeah. meat and fucking. Yeah, they give you like an antibiotic, but um, but yeah, it's like let's just you know, cause dirty ass Europeans came to America with their fleas, and um, <laughs> they really little, caused like, fleas all the world's problems. Them. They came in they with their fucking fleas, all and the then they were like all over animals and stuff. Like a big thing that killed Native Americans was obviously like typhus, but also mm -hmm. literally the fucking Black Death ravaged the 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 New World for. Fucking 300 years. Why do you think their population went from hundreds of millions to, like, three? Yeah. No, I mean... Europe is evidence God doesn't love us. Obviously, monkeys can contract the Black Plague, or the Black Death. It's... I just... I'm interested to find if there's any historical record at all of this being, like, at all a significant, like, spreader of the disease. I don't like, think that the Black Plague made that many inroads in Africa. Yeah, but, like, what about... Asia? Like... Well, what, in those little shit monkeys? What do you mean? <laughs> what are shit monkeys? <laughs> well, well, those, I mean, I mean, like, apes. It's not in, like, apes in Africa. Like, the plague didn't make it, like, that far down the Nile. I, no, I mean, monkeys can obviously catch it, too. Like, and monkeys are on every continent except... No, 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 no. I, I understand that. I understand that. But you just said apes being a vector for the disease. Monkeys, yes. Okay, well, sorry. I meant monkeys. You know what, folks? This whole this whole monkey-ape dichotomy thing we got going on here, it's not working <laughs> out very well. 
We just need <laughs> we just, we need <laughs> one term. Non-human. The issue is the issue is non-human primates is such a fucking. It's so such many a words. drag to say. Yeah, we need something cooler. We need a cooler acronym to reference all non-human primates within one. I mean, people in research labs usually just abbreviate to NHPs, but that's also not fun to say. Yeah. We should come up with a new word. We should. <laughs> we should be like Shakespeare. We should just come up with words about monkeys. We should. Anyways, so I think we've talked for long enough. We can definitely talk for long enough. <laughs> this is we we went down some some insane rabbit holes this episode. I think we should close things off with maybe a question or two. Love to love to answer questions from our patrons in our Gorilla Radio Show Patron Discord, which you can access for just one dollar a month. Yeah. Did you know that? Ah, you bet yeah. you didn't know that. That's why yeah, you're not in crazy. our Discord right now. <laughs> but now that you know that, you should go to patreon.com slash gorilla radio show and give us at least one dollar a month. Guys, if you pay for the Patreon, you can get the blooper reel where you can listen to me try to record the fucking mid <laughs> like eight times before I give you the shoddy one that you're getting on the episode. There's like yeah. seven others that are way worse, um, that are mostly me cackling. So um, I don't think we answered this one, and I do think Austin probably has something interesting to say about this one. Um, so from fucking Darby, we love Darby. Let's go. Um, yeah. Has anyone ever tested the effect of screen usage on monkeys? Do monkey love iPad? I think if I were a monkey, I would love iPad. That's all. Hi, yeah, Darby. we, we love talked Darby. about this in our episode aptly named uh, iPad Baby Gorillas. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You can check that out at our wherever you got podcast. Link, wherever you get, wherever you're listening to this. I think screen addiction <laughs> is such like a nebulous concept. I don't think there's any like clinical studies into the effects it has on the brain, or at least mm -hmm. I I'm sure there are, but. I haven't looked into it at all, basically, but I do know that based on the example we have in our episode that we did on that one gorilla at the Lincoln Park Zoo, yeah, there was a gorilla who visitors would come up and show their iPads and phone screens and stuff to the gorilla, and he would become so enamored by them that he was like completely starting to like drop social cues from other gorillas because he didn't care mm. about them anymore he, he's like one of those comics that like boomers make about like millennials with their necks glued to their phone or whatever the hell mm. uh -huh. it was that except like unironically that was what was happening with the gorilla like he could not function normally because he was so enraptured by people's phone screens do you think if we just did like surgical modification to every single non-human primate to ever be born we could change their evolution what are we going to do to him, though? I don't know. Give him, like, really long legs or something. Are we going to make them be able to speak French or something? I don't French think that's... Yeah, we should... Evolution. Like, what do you... Like, what do you mean by... I don't know. I just, ha I, I just... I'm just looking at Amare, yeah, the, could, the gorilla could, that got the screen addiction yeah, issue. Yeah, could and we I was genetically like, modify every monkey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah but I was like, wouldn't... Yes, we I mean, could. I should guess, we? Yes, like, what... <laughs> I don't know. I want, to make the, have... I want to make chimpanzees more violent. How do we go about that? I mean, that could probably just be done with artificial selection and socialization. I don't think you would need to do gene modification therapy. I think like, we should though. You wouldn't uh, need to okay. do CRISPR. To... <laughs> There's a violence gene. That you I want a CRISPR. I want a CRISPR like Travis and Mo. <laughs> make every chimp. <laughs> to, to make the, the ultimate chimp. Every chimp, chimp that's ever heard a person. I want to like. I want to CRISPR them into one. Jim, <laughs> and I want to I want to let him loose in like the UN. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good target. I should I should have thought about that with my. my yeah, no, right? There's no the out. issue is there's no railroads next to the UN. Yes, there is. The train goes um, across the street. It's underneath. Oh really? Yeah. Why would? And also, why do you know that? Side, I, because my aunt used to live like three blocks away from it, and every time I go to New York, uh -huh. I force whoever I'm with to go to the UN with me because I think it's cool. Hey y'all. <laughs> Hey, hey, my railway unionists, I had a crazy idea just now. Are you a member of the MTA <laughs> Transit Union? <laughs> God so, bless our soldiers. This next question is a bit of a loaded question, um, because oh, yeah? it brings to the front something that I didn't know was a thing that happened. Uh, Mina asks, do you think the military could train monkeys to disarm bombs by jacking them off like they did dolphins in the Cold War. Yes. Huh. 
did they jerk off dolphins as positive reinforcement training during my brother in christ i think people take every opportunity to jack off a monkey i mean jack off a dolphin because I, I know about that lady that, like, had to jerk off the dolphin or else he would get, like, really upset because they were trying to, like, teach the dolphin to live among hum- humans. But I didn't... Is this a well, thing? Well, you know, like, I, the Russians, like, train military dolphins, right? Like, you know that they do that. Like, I d- no, I didn't know about that. Yeah, like, there are, like, like the Soviet Union here, I'm looking at it right now. The, like, the Soviet Union, the Soviet Navy operated a research facility... To explore military uses of marine mammals at the Kazachia Bukta... Fuck, fuck off. Some place in Crimea. Um, yeah, like they were trying to do things with them. And also, whoa. Interesting. The Soviet military dolphin program was passed to the, new, to the Ukrainian Navy. Oh my god. Who okay. continued to do this. Do you think they're deploying, like, dolphins with fucking... Oh, well, like, uh, well strength? after the 2014 annexation of Crimea, the Ukrainian dolphin program was like, taken over again by the Russians. Um, so, and... is it ongoing? Yeah. Um, this is insane. What? This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life, and the most pro, like, this is, like, the most dumb, liberal on Twitter Ukrainian propaganda I've ever seen. A counterclaim suggests the dolphins died patriotically after going on hunger, hunger strikes and resisting the Russians. <laughs> that is not true. That is simply not true. Anyway, Russia that. reportedly used um, some sort of advanced tech to try and visualize what the dolphins' biosonar um, signals look like. I mean, that makes sense. I don't understand strapping weapons on them and trying to train anyway, them to Anyway, the submarines. U.S. Navy trains dolphins and sea lions under the U.S. Navy Marine Mammal Program. We do it too? Diego. The Navy gets some of its dolphins from the Gulf of Mexico. Military what dolphins were military dolphins were used by the U.S. Navy during the First and Second Gulf Wars, and their use dates back to the Vietnam War. About what seventy-five do- dolphins were in the program in two thousand seven, and thirty sea lions were in the program by twenty nineteen. The U.S. Navy implemented a program in nineteen sixty to work with dolphins and sea lions in order to help with defense, mine detection, and the design of new submarines and underwater weapons. What in the Fuck. More than 19 species, including sharks and birds, were tested. The bottlenose dolphin and the California sea lion were considered at the uh, considered the best for what the Navy needed. Um, again, the biosonar thing that the Russians are trying to fuck with, um, helping to find underwater mines. Um, dolphins okay. have contributed. Dolphins have contributed to saving more lives in open water than specially trained Navy lifesavers. <laughs> <laughs> the dolphins are literally better at being troops than the actual troops. This Care of animals. Hey, folks, okay. folks, blah, blah, really quickly, training. I just want to say, there's no conspiracy theory too big. Whatever you think you're onto, you're onto it. Keep digging. Keep digging. Go deeper. <laughs> we, Go we, deeper. Cool. Okay. Get more obsessed. So do okay. it. Do okay. it. Do it. Okay, everybody, hold on for a second. Rumors um, circulate that dolphins have been trained specifically to kill divers, a claim denied by the U.S. Navy. (laughs) Um, Retired U.S. Admiral Tim Keating claimed that military dolphins could be used to detect mines off the Strait of Hormuz after Iran threatened to close the waterway. Israel does this now, too. (laughs) Hamas Hamas suspects Israel of using dolphins for the purpose of targeting Hamas dive fighters. What is happening in... What have the Hamas got... <laughs> <made dinosaur? laughs> what similar the accusations, happening? Similar accusations were made against Israel in 2015 when the Al-Quds... I guess that's that's Hamas's news, I guess. Claimed to have sources regarding another incident of a cetacean fighter equipped with a remote control, a camera, and a weapon that can fire harpoons. Oh my god, Russia trains SEALs too. <laughs> what is Detects going on? torpedoes, mines, and other ammunition at depths of up to 120 meters. Okay. Seals are considered better suited than belugas for military use in polar conditions for their, quote from the Russian Navy, quote, their high professionalism and ability to understand, retain, and learn oral commands. Oh okay. my fucking God. In 2019, a beluga okay. was found off the... I'm, this is almost the end. Is was found off the coast of Norway that was believed to have been trained by the Russian Navy because it was wearing a fucking harness that said equipment and then, like, the location, St. Petersburg. 
<laughs> this seems and like something the that they would lie the beluga, about. The beluga then attempted to pull ropes off the side of the Norwegian vessel. What the fuck is fucking happening? <laughs> there are stray <laughs> dolphins. Experiments were conducted by the Russian Navy as to whether belugas could be used to guard entrances to naval bases and assist deep water divers and, if necessary, kill. <laughs> Can it kill? What we have absolute such a strange fuck. relationship with animals in this world. Um, but to get back to the original question, um, first of all, I'm going to need to look further into that claim that they were jerking off dolphins to train them to disarm bombs. I don't know. That doesn't. I don't know if I. I mean, I don't know what to believe anymore. But I, I'm going to have to verify that for myself. Um, there's two aspects of this question that I can sort of answer, though. A, is, like, jerking off monkeys positive reinforcement? Can it be used for, like, training? The answer for that is, um... I think Honest it, answer, I honestly. think they kind of do that. Like, I... I've mentioned... I may have mentioned this before. Who's I, they? <laughs> like... People who you? work with chimps. Not me. Not me. No, no, you don't work say with chimps. Me. Do not say it was me. You work with chimps. So, You're being awfully vague here, Austin. Have you ever touched a chimp dick before? I have not. For the express purpose of getting that little guy off? No, I have not. But what I do know is that I had a co-worker who had oh. some chimps who were sexually attracted to her at one of her previous jobs. And... If they wanted the chimps to cooperate with, you know, other keepers more, they would send her in what? so that he would, like, jerk off to her, and then he would be willing to just, like, do whatever for her, you know? It was, uh... So, yes. It... If you can't tell my silence, <laughs> I am in awe. I am shocked. They just sent her in there as, like... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I don't remember the details. She mentioned this extremely offhandedly, like it was just normal. <laughs> but like apparently, like the chimps like to jack off to her, so that so they would send her in, and the chimps would jerk off to her. We uh, need to bring an end to primatology. We need to stop <laughs> primatology. Like what the fuck? Well, what they are you doing? And the, it's not like they're gonna stop the chimp from jerking off. <laughs> they don't need to make her like make this woman be sexually assaulted for it every time. It's, it's, uh, if she's on the other side of the cage, he's just like, <laughs> you're that everybody. <laughs> Austin's defending sexual assault. That's not <laughs> but essentially, that is what I had heard was something that happens. I'm sure, conceivably, this is something that a chimpanzee would do. Inconceivable! And Great it's movie. like, she works with the chimps movie. anyway, so it's not like she can just hide from the chimps every time they start jerking off. But, like, I don't know. It's it's a very... Those like, chimps I, sound like they needed to be shot. <laughs> I don't know. These are like sex pest chimps. That's every chimp, I think, and I think they should all be shot. So this Something nicer needs to fill their ecological niche. <laughs> so that that's that side of that question. The other side of this question of the the military trading monkeys. I don't know. We tried to research this on our Greg is a crank episode where we looked into monkeys usage in MK Ultra. But I do say we have a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act, uh pending into the usage of monkeys in the MK Ultra experiments. Now, I know the CIA is very secretive about these things, so they probably won't give a shit, but I'm hopeful that maybe we'll get something about monkeys' military use if they respond to us. Well, they a, have to. I mean, they have to. I don't know if there's, like, a time limit, but... They think they have... I think it's 90 days. Okay, interesting. They'll probably just tell us no, but, like, I'm interested to see what they say. Keep your ears peeled for that. Um, within 20 days, federal agencies are required to respond to a FOIA request within 20 working days, excluding Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays. The period does not begin until the request is actually received by the component that maintains the records sought. Wait, okay, are FOIA requests so... free? I think so, yeah. Can I just fucking put a FOIA request in for anything I want? Yeah, but the thing is, like, they can either say yes or no, and then I think they can just take their sweet time actually getting the information to you. It's just they have to, like, respond with a yes or no. I'm not sure, though. 
Well, I don't know how it all works. I act, the person who put in this FOIA request for us is actually Vampire Jason from our Discord. Uh, they've been getting involved lately, so you know, shout outs. You but, can uh, FOIA request yourself. Really? Yeah, which I thought about doing, but then I think that would just mean that now they're going to have a file on me because I FOIA'd myself if I don't have one. But you can you can send a FOIA request to the FBI to get your own FBI file if you have one, if one exists for you. Uh-huh. Interesting. Well, yeah. with that being said, I think we've gone down enough rabbit holes this episode. Um, they were all fun rabbit holes, but hopefully they weren't bad to listen to. Hopefully. <laughs> we, uh, we, <laughs> I just have to point out again that we did do the literal opposite thing that we said we were going to do, where somehow our bonus episodes are more structured than our main feed episodes right now. <laughs> I promise everybody the next episode is going to be gold. Maybe we'll we have we do on. have again just a plug. We do have coming up. We think we're going to start this in April. The blowback esque series that is currently untitled. Where we're working title. To... You know what? Why don't you go hop on to twitter.com or Instagram or something and tell me what the fuck you want to call it. Give me suggestions, because we don't know what to call this, because yeah, basically, Jim Back would make any goddamn sense. No, that, we don't... Okay, I don't think we should actually rip off Blowback. I just We I, shouldn't. Yeah, no. We let, do need let, a series Let's, let's do our so own thing. This is, a, this is going to be a very serious series. We're going to be tracing the history of, you know, Congolese, like, colonization and anti-colonial efforts, and how that is intertwined with, you know, conservation efforts in the area, and how it's impacted the population's of you know wild mountain gorillas and chimpanzees and all that so it's i'm very excited to do it i think it'll be an interesting topic for me so that's um what we have planned in the pipeline but for now uh if you've listened this far thank you consider subscribing to our patreon of course consider buying the monkey coffee and consider checking us out on other platforms yep all our information is going to be down below you can find our link tree and all of our socials um, and thank you so much for listening. Um, we are we also just launched a new series on our Patreon, Monkey Movie Mania. We're watching monkey movies, and we just watched Dunstan Checks In. Um, I I had a breakdown watching that movie. It was a bad movie. Um, I so go go check out the Patreon as well. Well, last time, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye bye bye. Pew, 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 pew. Listen to the sounds in the city. The sound of traffic. And the sounds of children playing. But where is that music coming from? And why are all the children running? Of course, it's the organ grinder and Mikko the monkey. Almost every day, all summer long, Mikko and Mr. Russo come to the park. Mr. Russo cranks his organ and Mikko collects pennies from the children and puts them in his pocket. He's supposed to tip his hat, but sometimes, sometimes he forgets. And Mr. Russo tugs gently to remind him. What fun to watch the monkeys.